can you spot the cancer cells in this x-ray? Which is the Picasso? And which is the Monet? And which one of these are actual words? I know something that can tell us. These guys. Pigeons. I guess bird brain takes on a different meaning here. And perhaps their smarts is why we're still grappling with pigeon problems after so many years. And they recently ruffled the feathers of some of our viewers. One of them, Tampanese resident Shafiq Sadiq. He sent us these and wants us to find out if more can be done about pigeons. These pigeons, well, they become quite the nuisance in the neighbourhood. So I want to investigate why this is happening and why we just can't seem to get rid of these feathered foes. Pigeon-related complaints have shot up over the past decade. From 2,490 in 2014 to 7,016 in 2023. That's a three-fold increase. Earlier, Talking Point received a message from Sadiq about pigeons in his Tampanese neighbourhood. And he seems to think he has zeroed in on the source of the pigeon menace you can see yeah. pigeons down there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's someone actually feeding them. Someone is actually feeding the pigeons. Someone Correct. in the block. Correct. And you think that's the reason why they all keep coming, coming to this area? Yes, definitely. I think there's a food source here, so that's why they're attracted to this spot. But how can you be sure? There are some instances which I actually captured and recorded sounds of the food dropping from from oh. you know certain height that the pigeons did congregate. How bad was the situation? They come like uh, twice a day and they leave droppings everywhere outside the unit. Uh, yeah, that's why most residents here are afraid to actually hang their clothing outside. Yeah. Why don't I bring you up and show you the problem? Yeah, can yeah, we? Let's, let's go. go. So this is the area. Ah, this is where you hang your laundry or you yeah. should be hanging your laundry. Correct. Yeah, this is obviously poop that's dropping from the top. Yeah. You can see it on the grill, all the railing has been hit by it, so I, I wouldn't hang my clothes out here either. Ooh. I almost don't want to stick my head out too much for fear of what may drop. You can see the bird seats they use. Okay. Oh, this is the feet. Yep. Oh, this is not just your remnants leftover food. This is specifically bought for Correct. feeding. So this guy that is feeding, how, how often does he do it? I would say twice a day. One in the morning, one in the evening. So it's yeah. a regular routine for him? Correct. Have you done anything to sort of ensure the pigeons don't come in? Mainly just close the windows most of the mm. time of the day. Have you ever thought of going upstairs and knocking on the door <laughs> and saying, hey, uncle, auntie? Uh... <laughs> Definitely not. With all the videos of people, you know, bothering their neighbours after like a, a, a nice conversation about things that are happening in their, their estate, things can turn really bad. Did you report it to anyone? Yeah, actually we use the One Service app. Okay. How many times have you reported this? I've reported this three times, okay. actually since 2022. So this okay. was the first one. October 2022, okay. Yeah. They said they've sent uh, educational leaflets to the neighbour, monitoring. And this was the second time. This is this year, 2024. Yeah. Correct. Thank you for your feedback. We have carried out inspections. Advise them against committing the offence. Notified NPARCs as well. And this was the last one. Also this Just year, recently, July yeah. 2024. Their message is we have carried out inspections. In fact, wait a minute. This seems almost identical in answer to the previous. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Do you think more should be done? Yeah, definitely. I feel that they actually should proceed with enforcement to at least you know process a fine for the individual or install a camera to catch the perpetrator, right. you see, in action, and then they can actually know who the exact unit is and put a stop to this. Okay. Yeah. 
Sadiq isn't the only one complaining about pigeons. Viewer Jeannie Ang, a resident of Taman Jurong in the West, wrote in to us. She has been tracking pigeon invasions in her home since 2019. And she's also complained about pigeon feeders. Online, pigeon-related complaints are also coming from across Singapore, in areas like Yunos Crescent and Orchard Road. There is no one single agency in Singapore that has an overview of pigeon-related complaints across the island. But this 2018 map from a study done by the National University of Singapore shows large pigeon populations in areas such as Tampanese, Bishan Topayo, Ang Mokyo, the downtown district, and Taman Jurong. But what puzzles me is... Look, there are signs here, here, and here. They're everywhere. These warning signs are the latest in a long line of efforts to keep people from filling the bellies of these birds. From 1969, when the first warning signs was put up in Empress Place, to ever-increasing fines over the years. Still, pigeon feeding continues to be a stick in our crawl. So Zubin has been on the prowl for pigeon feeders over the past year. $10,000, that's a lot of money. Yes. But have you ever had to enforce a fine of $10,000 on anyone? So far on record, we haven't reached uh, $10,000. So is it a reflection then that it may not be effective? And let me show you some examples. Okay. These were videos that some of the residents took. You can see that this particular unit that has all the soiling, right? The window is actually closed. Hmm. and the pigeons are just feeding from the latch. Right. Yeah. So this video itself will not be useful to us in enforcing. To really enforce under Wildlife Act of no feeding, the person must be shown uh, doing the act of feeding. Because you're saying it, you don't actually see a hen correct, <laughs> correct. feeding the pigeons, right? That's right. So that can be quite difficult because we're not really there trying to catch out our neighbours. But yet, if you don't have the evidence, then what do you guys do? We could install a temporary CCTV over okay. here so that ah. if there's anyone throwing food or feeding wildlife, we would get a notification. Issuing a composition fine yeah. helps a bit. Okay. But there will be a group of recalcitrant feeders they feed because of their personal beliefs. Right. So even if you issue them a composition fine, they might not want to stop what they're doing and they will just keep providing food for the wildlife. Okay, so it doesn't matter, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, they will still yeah, keep feeding. People, they have been feeding birds because mm -hmm. out of compassion, that, okay. that would be the number one reason. The second reason would be sometimes they're feeling lonely. Oh. And pigeons, they have a tendency to recognize their feeders. So if okay. you keep feeding, a flock of pigeons, right? Over time, they will recognize you. And when people are faced with loneliness, hmm. it seems like they are making new friends. So, uh, we do work with um, other agencies. I have seen some grassroots leaders uh, trying to solve this problem is by offering the person a pet. Oh. Yeah, with, with, with a pet, right? Okay. The person can fully focus on yeah, just taking care of the pet and instead of the wildlife that's supposed to be finding their own yeah, food out there. Yeah. Pigeon feeders may be the pet peeve of many, but are they the main reason why we can't get rid of these pesky birds? Emma Chow spends three days a week studying bird behaviour along nature trails. I've asked her to meet me here at Tampanis. Feeding is definitely one of the main problems. If you have a person who's handing out food very regularly, mm -hmm. pigeons will come to depend on them. Yep. But even if you left a lot of food out, if you didn't have any places where pigeons could nest or mm. roost, they probably wouldn't populate that area either. So nesting options are also a big factor for why pigeon problems arise. So a food source and a place to stay. Mm. Where would these uh, places to stay be? Well, let me show you. Okay. So 
what a lot of people don't realize uh -huh. is these are really popular real estate. These, well. the train tracks? Yes. Ah, ah. Yeah. I wonder if we might want to take a look? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. All right, Mr. Pigeon, are you home? But it seems somebody might be trying to terminate their tenancy. What we do see here is similar to the other side. What looks to be possibly poison. I'm making a house visit. Okay, we have an egg here. An egg? Yeah, some poison too. The space is pretty deep, so I don't yeah. think the poison matters that much. They've got so much room to walk around the poison. There's a lot of uh, twigs strewn about and a lot of detritus. Yeah. Just a little bit to the right. To the right. Yep, and there's some eggs wedged in that gap. Yeah, oh, right I see there. Oh, pigeon in there. Oh, there you go. Why do they like these holes, these pigeon holes, so to speak, right under the train tracks? Pigeons, they're actually also called rock doves, and their natural yeah. habitat would have been on cliff faces and rock faces. Oh, yeah. so they're the rock stars of their era. You could say that. <laughs> okay. Pigeons like anywhere that reminds them of where they would be nesting in their wild habitat. But this is a lot more hospitable because it's conducive and it's closed and it's sheltered and it's uh, regulated. In fact, this whole gap is great because there's a gap on each side yep. and in the middle is an open space so you get that shelter while that ventilation. Predators also wouldn't bother them so it does provide that safety. And it's particularly important because they're raising their young in these spaces. Emma and I head next to the other end of the island, Taman Jurong, where residents including viewer Jeannie Ang, who wrote in to us, have also been trying and failing to keep pigeons off their turf. Yeah, so that AC ledge there where the compressor is, see it's all dark and black because there are pigeons uh, who have a nest there. Well, there's definitely no feeding because the resident in that unit, she's unhappy about the birds and she's, you know, been cleaning it. They keep coming back to the same spot even though it's been cleaned and removed. Why is that? So pigeons are not stupid birds. They do know that there are some measures being put in place to exclude them from this site, but there's likely benefit in coming back to it. The site is very favorable because it's high up, we're seven stories up. Okay. They're able to escape possible predators or just disturbance in general. It's not directly under sunlight. It's shielded from the sun, maybe the rain. So they'll definitely feel more safe in something like this. But I want to show you this too. If you take a look at that ledge over there, there, there are actually spikes. I saw the pigeons just coming, walking around it, like nothing was there. When you take a look at this ledge, although the specks are there, they don't cover it entirely, which right. means that it may not be effective to really exclude them from this position to roost and nest. I have to cover the whole area. You want to spike it, you got to spike the whole, so that there's not a single empty spot. If the measures are really effective and they can't nest or roost here anymore, they might just move to the next ledge. Because if you oh. take a look at this whole building, their ledges are in abundance and they'll always just be able to move to the next one. Okay, so unless it's the entire block which has been blocked off mm. to them. Complaints about pigeons go beyond dirt and damage to property. They are also frequently linked to disease. Which is why I'm in downtown Singapore another hot property for pigeons. I'd like to dig deeper into just how harmful they are to us. And to do that... You want to start with here, this awning? Yeah, let's try over here. The Talking Point team is literally scooping poop. Oh, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> this spot is years, years of accumulation of pigeon poop. Ooh. 
Ooh, you've got some fresh poop here. It's still moist. Nice. We've sent the samples to a lab to find out just how toxic pigeon poop is and how it may affect you. So what are we looking at here? This is not good. This is a lot. It's in hundreds of millions. This came from the sample of pigeon poop that I gave to you. So these are the total bacteria count. Each of the shapes uh, actually indicates a different kind well, of... Well, the shape and the colour. Yes. So from what we see, there's a very high count for bacteria. There's uh -huh. a high count for fungus. and a high count for E. coli. Okay. This is actually is in hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions? Wow. So all this black stuff is... Salmonella, E. coli, salmonella. They are the leading cause of foodborne illnesses. We can get fever, diarrhea, uh, severe food poisoning, sometimes hospitalization, and in very serious cases, may be fatal as well. Oh. This is not unexpected and not surprising because, as we know, feces is a form of concentration of the bacteria, fungi, and toxins accumulated in the intestines before they're okay. expelled out. But I'm worried because one of the places where we collected a lot of the pigeon poop was outside a coffee shop. There was lots of pigeon poop on it, but underneath was their bowls and plates as well. So it's possible the poop could get mixed with all the cleaning. Yes, definitely. So when the feces contaminate the water and you wash your dishes with the water, there's a chance there's contamination in the place and use it to serve food later. The other is, this is a total fungal count. There's a very high count for fungus. Fungus produce a lot of spores. And these spores uh. can be airborne. Spores, when inhaled, it can cause respiratory illness as well. Oh, so if I'm near dried up pigeon poop and I... Yes. It can go in my system. Yes. It's clear that pigeon droppings can be a hazard to human health, but it's impossible to stop pigeons from treating the world as their toilet. The only way to ensure less poop is to reduce their population. That's proving to be a tough challenge. In June 2024, the government announced renewed efforts to reduce the pigeon population in Angmokyo, Bishan Tuopayo and Tanjung Paga. In a pilot, the three towns will see more patrols to catch illegal bird feeders and more culling. This involves feeding the birds food laced with poison. But this could lead to the unintended deaths of other animals. Which is why ACRES, an animal advocacy and wildlife rescue society, wants a more humane approach to controlling the pigeon population. So I brought you here, Tanjung Paga District, because I understand that the town council in this area has stepped up their culling measures. Yes. And I look around, actually, I don't see any pigeons here. So does that mean it's working? In Singapore, we've been culling for years now, over okay. a decade, but we know that it has not solved the problem. When you cull and remove yep. pigeons and the food resources are still the same, you actually end up increasing the population oh. because there'll be more food available for less number of pigeons, which means they will breed oh and survive even more successfully. That so, is how culling actually results okay. in an increase in population. So how fast do they breed? And wait, before you answer, I have some props. Wow. Yep. So two pigeons, they meet, they like each other, they mate. Okay. What happens next? So this breeding pair can lay two eggs in one breeding cycle. Okay, there's two more. And one breeding pair can have six cycles in a year. Up to six cycles. So that's another three, three six, more. nine, twelve. Okay. We will assume that they all okay. survive. And these baby birds will reach sexual maturity in six months' time, which means half of them can actually start breeding. They are going to start finding a partner. Ah, so they fly around, they meet a friend, and they all seal the deal. And so these become a breeding pair now. Yep. They can have up to three breeding cycles in the okay. leftover part of the year. So that would mean another six pigeons for each pen. Wow. <laughs> so the two original parents basically populate this whole group in 
One year. In one year? Yeah. Oh my gosh, and then that cycle repeats itself again. Yes. I don't think we have enough space on this on bench. bench. Imagine if each of these was a physical bird on the ground now, it'd fill up probably like half the park, right? Yeah. So what then is the solution? Can we find a way to not let them have so many babies? Definitely. So one approach is to address the reproductive rate itself by use of oral contraception. Oh. It has been done in Singapore. It was piloted a decade ago. And where did we pilot this? Let's go oh, take a look. Oh, let's go. Okay, so I'm guessing these guys are the reason why we are here in this spot, right? Yes, that's right. So this used to be the site for a pilot humane pigeon population project oh. about a decade ago. The landscape has changed quite a bit. Huh? There was a big grass patch here where many pigeons, we're talking about 400 pigeons. Wow, 400! ABA then actually did a pilot project by the oral contraceptive. So that actually really brought down the pigeon population over a year. We are talking about 60 to 70 percent drop in the population. Wow, how does it work? So it's a food bait which is laced with the contraceptive called the carbacin. Yeah. The egg's hatchability will be affected, um, hence making the reproductive cycle completely uh, pointless. Oh, okay. But otherwise, the pigeons are still fine. They yes. carry on living normally. Yes, it does not affect any of their physiological functions or behaviour. Okay, so if the program worked well here, did they continue doing it? Unfortunately, um, it was not continued even though there was a drop, oh. a big drop in How the come? population because um, it requires feeding of the pigeons every single day. Right. So that is one of the concerns ABA had on how sustainable is it to have someone to feed them on a daily basis. However, there are solutions now uh, using automated feeders yeah. to address that part. Automated as in what, is a machine just yes, spitting out the food? So it looks like a drum bin and yeah. it will release the food bait at a stipulated time. In other countries where this, uh, this project is implemented, pigeons literally come and wait around mm. the feeder. Yeah. yeah, because whether it's a human being or machine, doesn't matter. They, they doesn't just matter. come for the food, yes. right? They are waiting for the food to drop and right. they clear the food within a few seconds. It seems like using contraceptives with an automated bird feeder may be the solution we need. But until authorities decide to revisit that solution, we've just got to make sure that food sources for pigeons are kept to a minimum. It might be difficult to catch feeders in the egg, but we can still report any pigeon feeding instances we come across and we can do so using this one service app. Just make sure that when you submit a case, you choose animals and birds.